we'll start out with the KTM spin a couple blocks on that I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it then we'll come back switch out not sure which bike we'll grab next you guys will just have to see but yeah let's go bend a couple blocks let me get What's good beautiful people, it's your boy Khalifa Saad and yes, I am back with another video. As I said at the end of the last video, I didn't want to make it too long so I chopped that video and decided to create a new one for my second vlog of the day. And if you've been paying attention, the KTM is back home. So now all three of the bikes are good. And we're gonna get some riding in because tomorrow it is going to rain. So I won't be able to get out on the bikes. I could have swore I just felt a drop right now. But anyway, we're gonna get the bikes out real quick. Go for a ride. Uh, it is late in the afternoon. Hopefully I can, I can do this because the traffic is about to start. And I know we're gonna get caught in traffic. But anyway, I guess we outside right now. So this is my 2009 10 KTM RC8. Not exactly sure because the paperwork when I got it said 2010. But when you look up the colorway and the uh, I, actually, I need to check the VIN number. I'll check the VIN number and see. I haven't even taken the time to do it. But yeah, this is my 2018 Hayabusa and my 2021 BMW S1K. Out of all three bikes, I would say this is the quickest and most agile this one is the most comfortable so i love riding it this one is just all grunt as soon as you get on it it's ready to go i don't know something about this one is it was i can tell it was meant to be a track bike by the way it feels when you ride it the bmw you wouldn't think it's comfortable but it's actually pretty comfortable for uh for what it is i think i'm gonna put it on the track when i come back either that or i'm gonna buy a track bike when i come back because i'm gonna start getting on a on the track with makoto but yeah uh i'm gonna get geared up move my gopro over to my helmet and we're gonna hit a couple blocks uh fill up the bikes that need to be filled before we tuck them away for another few months so yeah let's go So I figured since the KTM hasn't gotten any love in a while, we'll start out with the KTM, spin a couple blocks on that. I'll tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Then we'll come back, switch out. Not sure which bike we'll grab next. You guys will just have to see. But yeah, let's go bend a couple blocks. Let me get this cold start real quick. Go ahead and 
check her out right now. So let's get it. All right, so in the interest of time, and considering the fact that uh, we're about to hit traffic, we're not gonna ride very long. And hopefully, <laughs> the footage from this front GoPro isn't too bouncy. I shouldn't have put it there. I should have moved it somewhere else. to get rid of that but like I was saying as far as the uh, the likes and dislikes of this bike I like the raw power but the fact that it lacks electronics due to two reasons one being that it was meant for track two uh, it is an older bike so it does not have all of the bells and whistles like newer bikes. But with that being said, as far as riding it, it's really pretty comfortable. The lean angle is not too much. Uh, the longest I've ridden this bike is probably three hours. We did a three hour ride once. And uh, it wasn't too bad. There's very little cushion on the seat, which did kind of pose a problem for the derriere. But other than that, uh, it wasn't too bad at all. I pulled over so we can, so we uh, do something about this freaking GoPro because I don't like the positioning of it. So, let's get it out of the freaking way. If I can get to my screwdriver. Actually, you know what? Let me just turn it off. Turn it off. There you go. And then, it's hard as hell to do this with gloves on. But yeah, we uh, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. That was not a good look. About to mount that somewhere else, but definitely not right there. But another thing about this bike that I'm not particularly happy with, I won't say happy, but I don't care for, is all of the vibration. This bike vibrates a hell of a lot. But it is light as hell. It's light as hell. Surprisingly, well I won't say surprisingly. It was built to be light. But the slightest amount of gas you give this thing, uh, yeah, she's ready to take off. And torque on this thing is, is ridiculous. You give it too much gas, you're bound to loop. I'm not even gonna lie. I've set this thing up a couple of times unintentionally. So, I mean, other than that, overall, I love the bike, I love the design of it, the way it looks. There's no other bike on the market 
at this point in time or ever that has looked this way it kind of reminds me of a stealth jet, jet uh, fighter jet oh, I thought Makoto cleaned it but it only cleaned the sides you got me Makoto but he also put the uh, I just noticed when I was getting on the bike he put my uh, sliders on so I appreciate it Makoto I normally don't sit in neutral but this light takes forever but anyway those are my likes and dislikes when it comes to this particular bike like I said overall I love it uh, when I picked it up I got it for a really really decent price uh, I can I'd probably i stack a year's salary on getting a bike in this condition anywhere else the only flaw on this bike and I'm not sure if you guys can see it but there's a, a burn spot right here in the speedo other than that this bike was pristine it was garage kept has very low miles on it it's only got a uh, 12, well less than 13,000 kilometers on it I'll put the math in the, in the uh the video so you guys know exactly how many miles are on it but yeah it's got low miles on it it was in pristine condition no scratches no no nothing it's never been dropped it was tuned so it does have a tune on it but other than that I mean it's in perfect condition not to say other than that but yeah it's in perfect condition no issues whatsoever I should have turned around right there. Anyway, we're gonna go down here, spin around, and then go back and pick up one of the other bikes. Oh, one other thing is that because this bike is older, it won't keep up with uh, the newer 1000s like it's, it's nowhere near as quick as my S1K it's probably got almost as much torque but as far as speed doesn't come close relatively quick but in comparison to modern day leader bikes doesn't compare but that's not why I bought it I didn't buy to keep up with any other bike I bought it because of the look of it uh, I had never really paid much attention to KTM but I was looking to buy a uh, H2. Either that or I was gonna buy a Ducati. But then my boy, Adobo Moto, was like, nah, why don't you check out the, the KTM RC8? You don't see a lot of those. So, did the research, found one, and we went and copped it. Turn around right here and head back. 
with no gears on low speed this thing does not like it from first to second gear front wheel was I felt it come up it didn't come up much but you could feel it that's how much low end torque this thing has but the good thing about it is the way it's designed it throws you back in the seat and the seat is cut at an angle to where you don't slide any further back. For this one and hop on the next one <laughs> all right so next we're gonna jump on the booster hopefully the booster starts up because I did uh, connect my sounds back and I didn't put it on the tender because sometimes well, it's not sometimes, it's all the time. Uh, when I connect that stuff, it drains the booster. And yep, sure shit, it really did. So, I'm going to have to pull my 
tender over put the boost on the tender that way while we're spinning the block on the beamer it'll be charging up I'm glad I got these quick connects on here makes it so much easier all I have to do line this up plug it right in there and then watch that charge up Hmm. All right. We run the beamer. No big deal. Let's get this cold start. I know she's ready. I want her to start, she starts. Anytime I want her to run, she runs. I can't complain. I can't complain at all. Kids love it. <laughs> I don't know if y'all caught that, but they were asking me to rev it. But yeah, there's absolutely nothing that I dislike about this bike. so quick and agile it's a 1000 cc that's barely heavier than the r6 i want to say it's maybe 15 pounds heavier than the r6 if that somebody can do the math or look it up but it's not much heavier than a 600 and that is crazy when you're sitting on a thousand cc's I actually had this thing dyno after I uh, put the full aqua exhaust on it and flashed it and it was 198 actually it was 197 uh, horsepower so think about that Well, 
something this freaking light. It's only like 417 pounds or something like that. And those snap crackles and pops. Shots. I love it. It's got heated grips, has cruise control. I've yet to use the cruise control. I've used the heated grips before. I used the heated grips last winter, uh, but I've never used the cruise control on it. But when I got it, I redid, I won't say the entire bike. I kept the, uh, the factory uh, clip-ons, the factory handles. Uh, I did change out my uh, levers to, not my levers, my um, shit, the word escapes me now. But anyway, I put on Vortex uh, brake and uh, gear. I don't know why I can't even think of the word right now. I'm getting old. But then I changed out the uh, the tail to get rid of that ugly well tail that was on it. But this bike is the one that's just below the M. So it didn't come with the uh, standard magnesium wheels. I forgot what these are, but they're not the standard wheels. But BMWs, they come in classes and uh, this one is the one just below the M and it does have the racing package on it. And if I were to track a bike or when I do track a bike it will probably be this one. Reason being is the Booster is definitely not a track bike. Even though the KTM is a track bike, those are so rare that if I tear it up, it's not like I run out with another one. They're supposed to, supposedly coming out with a 2025 version of the KTM. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, that particular bike, I, I probably won't be able to find another one, especially in that condition. So, I won't track it. I'll track this and if I tear it up, I can rebuild it or I can just buy another one. Boosters come nowhere close to it. I'll come back here so I can stretch it out a little bit. Because there's nothing back here with form land. As you guys can see, a bunch of lotus fields. So I don't have to worry about a lot of traffic. And even with the fields being out here, it's not like the formers are out because the lotus fields are out of season right now. This is wicked when it comes to speed and agility. Oh, I want to 
put some gas in her and then we'll put her back up. I mentioned it already, I put my cardo on my uh, helmet. And this bike is so loud that I can barely hear the music and it's right in my ear canal, turned all the way up. And I can barely hear it when I'm getting on this bike. It's just that loud. one thing about Japan when you come to the uh, railroad crossing you better stop because if you don't there's a cop anywhere around you you're getting a fat ticket me <laughs> yeah we're gonna go put some gas in it and then we're gonna we'll put her up grab the uh the booster take the booster out and i guess it's kind of good that the booster's battery was dead and we're saving the booster for last uh that was the first bike that i got so actually i'm going in reverse of how i got the bikes KTO was the last one. Uh, I bought that so I could take the Guam and found out that it was Japanese spec only. Uh, well, I had bought this one because I thought I was going to take this one to Guam prior to getting the KTM and it turns out this was Japanese spec only. And my Hayabusa, although it is American spec, I've stretched it and did modifications to it. So. Taking it out of Japan won't be an issue, but bringing it back into Japan would be a nightmare. I had to put it back to stop. I don't even know where my stock pipes are. 
and then on top of that it's stretched So that would be an issue. But yeah, just things that work out in my favor. So I ended up having to buy another bike in Guam. But it is what it is. Konnichiwa, Mantan onegashimasu. Premium card. So yeah, we'll get her gassed up, grab the, the booster, and then we're out from there. Hi, I got a rush stop. But yeah, I love this gas station. I don't have to pump my own gas. <laughs> Sometimes these pumps confuse me. I could have put one of my gloves back on so it's quicker and easier to pull out of here. I need to get back over here. My Japanese is getting a little rusty. All right, you guys can see the battery is now charged on a Hayabusa. It didn't take long at all. Just that short ride and the boost is ready. So we'll get her out on the road and talk about her real quick. I shouldn't be leaving my garage door open, but 
Luckily I'm in Japan so I don't have to worry about anything. I was told by my boy Jason, because I left him with the Hayabusa in Guam, that I'm having an issue with the ignition not wanting to turn. So, I have to put some graphite in it. See if that loosens it up. Alright, there we go. This is so quiet compared to the Beamer. As far as my likes and dislikes with the Hayabusa, I don't have any dislikes with the Hayabusa. It, just like my Beamer, satisfies everything that I want and need in a bike. Uh, the first gen Hayabusa came out back in, I believe it was 98, 99. Uh, I wanted one then, but at the time, I was married with a young child. And uh, the wife did not want me to have another bike, so I focused on my career and raising my child and spending time with my family and traveling. And then finally I bought a bike in 2002, which was a ZX7. I love that bike. But when I bought the ZX7, 2002 I bought it knowing that I had matured a little I wasn't completely matured because uh, I was out doing dumb shit on that bike but I probably would have killed myself on Hayabusa uh, which is why I'm thankful to my ex-wife for talking me out of buying one of them Cause I probably wouldn't be here right now because I was doing some dumb <laughs> I was in Italy at the time well Sicily and I thought I was a stunt rider so I was trying to do every stunt under the moon I did it on the uh, CX-7 until I tore it up and decided you know I was gonna rebuild it and uh, save it and not try to do anything dumb with it anymore If I'm taking it I don't give a crap but anyway yeah this is my dream bike so after I retired from the military I really have any responsibilities kids are grown out of college don't have any bills so I decided to buy a Hayabusa but I absolutely love it it's comfortable a lot of people think Hayabusa is a sport bikes they're not, the sports touring bikes, there's a difference. So as far as the, the ride and comfortability of these bikes, they're very comfortable. I've done six, seven hour rides on this bike uh, with no issue, well, I'll tell, I won't say no issues. It does have a gel seat, and a gel seat is comfortable up to about three hours, uh, but every two hours I would pull over and, and let my uh, let my my buns unthaw because yeah it, it, <laughs> your cheeks start to hurt after a minute. I don't give a damn what you got, what kind of seat you got. When you ride for long periods of time. But as far as angle the lean angle is not bad it's just enough to where you can tuck when you want to tuck and get on it 
It's fast enough to keep up with any other bike. They're comfortable enough to take on tour, which I plan on doing once I come back to Japan for good. Uh, which it'll be November next year. I plan on taking a long ride across Japan and documenting it. Not exactly sure where I'll go yet. Or I should say, I don't know how far up north I'll go. There's nothing about this bike I don't like. different style of mirror on this bike because I do not like these they look good at least I thought they look good uh, when I saw them online but then when I got them and I put them on the bike I didn't like them but I definitely did, definitely do not like the stock mirrors either so they're not going back on the strap keep hitting my damn helmet my likes and dislikes about each of my bikes i'm gonna go ahead and close this video out you guys make sure you like share comment subscribe click that post notification bell turn it to all so that you know when i drop a new video with that